So we're in Mid Murray region of South Australia, east of Swan Reach Conservation Park, and we have been working on a Western Pygmy Possum project with landholders to set up habitat boxes and monitor them for activity. It's pretty cute. It does look a little bit similar to a mouse, but it's got bigger rounded ears. Big ears and big beady eyes. Well, it's very small, obviously, the pygmy. It has a prehensile tail that kills around so it can help it climb on trees and stuff. With little pads, they run around, they're very, very fast. They can climb on anything that's a little bit rough. And the first time I ever come across one, the fold-up chair sort of opened up and I thought it was a mouse in there. I looked at it and I thought, you're a strange looking mouse. They build a little nest of leaves. They clean the nests out as well. They actually remove the leaves uh, and they bring new and fresh leaves in. But that night I was watching TV on a current affair program and they were talking about pygmy possum and I thought, my God, that's what I've seen. We're on private property and the landholders participated in one of our habitat box making workshops that we ran a couple of years ago and they set up these boxes on their property hoping that they might actually have some western pygmy possums here. We didn't know that we had possums in the area. There'd been some pitfall trapping done at Yukamara, which is north of this location, and they had western pygmy possums. But we didn't know that there was any on this place. We knew there was some north of Sudan, at least one possum, because someone found it drowned in a bucket of water under a mallee tree, and that's what got us thinking that the possum could actually be alive there, living there on a piece of mallee that was so small we just had hope that there actually might be some out in these larger tracts of Mallee area. The Western Pygmy Possums, they love nectar. So it was always thought that they move where there's the floral resources. So Mallee, when it's flowering and other things, that they'll move for that. And with these boxes though, we found that they actually stay in these boxes and they bring leaves in and build a nest inside the boxes. And they bring fresh leaves in and like replace them and then pile more in. And some of these boxes now like are almost up to the opening with leaves and they're just breeding in there like. And then obviously when um, they have young ones, you know, like the leaves are right up over them, to, over them like a cocoon. We've had cameras set up on some of these boxes for years now and you can see several possums coming out at night and they must just keep breeding in them and using them because they're just such good little houses. We thought, well, this might be a new project that we could get started with. Support landholders, engage them and get them actively doing something on their properties, you know, hoping to provide habitat for these creatures that we thought may be out here. So we started doing some habitat box workshops with them. Maybe 20 people together will make 40 boxes and it'll take around about an hour and a half to two hours and that's it, finished. The they'll have a, a discussion about the pygmy possum either before or after the, the exercise. We've got a tin lid, so the box is made out of like pine, like really thick pine. It's not treated at all, so it's not toxic. It's been screwed together so it doesn't fall apart easily and the tin lid helps to weatherproof it. There's like a point at the front hole for it to like stand on before it goes in there and on, on the inside there's also like a landing pad which also helps to stop predators getting in there. And everybody seemed to enjoy, and not only making the boxes, when especially the kids, they like making the boxes, because most of the boxes that these people are making, they're going to take home and they're going to put them somewhere and monitor the use of the box. Some of the ladies had never used a, a, an impact drill before. Within a, a few minutes or so, they were quite proficient at it and they actually quite, uh, felt it was quite a challenge and they were quite into it. All the boxes are numbered um, and GPSed and then they're monitored when, basically when the landholder 
comes out to their property and wants to do it. There's been some properties that we've been really interested in doing more regular monitoring and this is one of them. So we've got nine different boxes out here and there's seven that actually have nests or nest material in them. I went to the box on the weekend, Sunday morning, and I opened up the box lid and had a look and there was a family in there, like lots of little ones. But I was hoping to get a picture, but I couldn't unfortunately because they were under all these leaves. Yeah, we were interested in well, what was going on with the possums and how long they were actually staying and using the boxes for. So we set up some cameras on a couple of the boxes out here to get some data. And one of our volunteers, Don Lester, has been putting all that data into Excel to see what the activity is like with box usage. And that's how we know that they've just been staying and using the boxes throughout the year. Like there's different times when they're more active than others, which is quite interesting. The first two hours after sunset, they're very active. And then the last two hours before sunlight in the morning, they are similarly active. And the strange thing that we've found is that uh, in the Mallee anyway, they seem to be active all year. Uh, there's been no part of the year where they seem to have gone into a long torpor. This project now has probably moved forward into looking at the habitat more and protecting it from herbivores. So some of these Mallee areas have feral goats, so we're encouraging landholders to use feral scan to record sightings of goats so then we can hopefully get some funding or some action on ground to start doing some trapping programs to help protect the habitat. So we ran several different box making workshops over the last few years and the first ones we did were like at Mildanda and the landholders essentially took their boxes home to wherever they were and we, we didn't really have a good record of that. And then there was like more interest in the project from the SA Museum and we teamed up with the Waterhouse Club and we did several box workshops with them and because they were essentially doing it to support the project and not just take them back to their own properties, we ended up having boxes put up at places like Murundi Wildlife Reserve. So I think there's about 20 boxes that went out there. Made a, a box making workshop at Cowperham with Waterhouse and they went to an island near Chowla. And we also did a box workshop with them up at Burra and then we put the boxes on two private land properties in the Top Hill Ranges. Through the box workshops, we've just got boxes spread all over the state. I mean, even as far as Hiltaba and down at Marion Bay and some people even took them to Victoria. They do use the boxes. They're not really expensive boxes and they will last quite a large, you know, quite a number of years as well. This project's really helped us to learn a bit more about the possums and their spread, like where they are, and the fact that they actually keep using the boxes, like they live in them, they keep breeding in them. So some people think ha habitat boxes are not worth it, like we're better off when we are, we're better off protecting the habitat, but often these places don't, don't provide that essential home. Like if they're able to keep breeding in these, we're helping the populations, you know. We had that too with the bat box project. Like we set boxes up places where there was so many good hollows that you'd think a bat wouldn't even use the box at all, but they do. They use them, they breed in them, they might last for 10 years and then they might disintegrate, but you've still added to that population. That makes me feel good inside actually to have all these animals living out there, you know, like pygmy possums and mallee fowl. I feel good about doing things for nature.